Hey friends, okay, so today I have a special guest. This is my sweet mother-in-law. She thankfully lives five minutes from us, but she is amazing, very devout Catholic, goes to mass every every day pretty much, and it's, it's amazing that we get to live near her, but she is very um, spiritually gifted, I feel like, in knowing different devotions, and so she's gonna share with us the St. Benedict medal and a little bit about St. Benedict and all about him. So, um, so I thought it'd be fun to, to share it with you guys. So go ahead. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with the St. Benedict medal, which I have to tell you a lot of very devout people are not. Um, this is the one side. This is what it looks like on one side. And here's the two sides. So it's got St. Benedict on the one side holding up the rule the St. Benedictine rule um, that he, uh, in the fifth century, was um, devised and uh, literally saved civilization with it. And then this is the other side, and these are all um, the first letter of the, of the Latin that stand for the, the prayer of against evil. And um, so they have, for exorcisms, they say this prayer. Mm. And so these are, are the first letters on this. So that's on one side, and St. Benedict is on the other. Sometimes I give up this. They have, um, it could be on a necklace or whatever, inside a cross. So it's a little bit like the miraculous medal. You kind of always look at the miraculous medal on the other side. Mm -hmm. And um, just to see it now, the miraculous medal, with or without the M on the back is still the miraculous medal. But um, anyway, these, so that's what it looks like. I started to uh, have my devotion. I take Warriors to Lords, and I started that practice. I was over and um, we went to a religious store while I was over there, and one of the priests told me about St. Benedict, and he said that he, um, we have a lot of warriors who are um, struggling with um, bad thoughts and evil a little bit and from you know PTSD and um, as many people struggle with especially now in these times um, and the priest told me that this was this particular metal was very powerful against evil and so I thought well gosh I want it <laughs> I want that yeah um, and brought back some of the metals and asked if our priest if he would please bless it and he said well you really need to have a Benedictine bless this because it's very, very powerful if the Benedictine blesses it. And they, they will um, graciously bless it, but they do say that, they say the um, right on it. They will tell you the whole, the, in Latin, um, he says the whole thing that you would say um, that each one of those letters stands for, oh, wow. which is really amazing to hear it. It's um, hmm. to have, because we, we do have evil in our midst, and I've never been so aware of it as now. Yeah. I've never, I've, I've never actually, you know, seen so much divisiveness, so much anger, so much strife. And I think that, I think our kids really need protection against evil. Mm -hmm. But one of the main things, I have gotten a lot of the medals and given them, I have mothers who have asked me to pray for their sons. And those are usually adult sons who are wayward or drugs or alcohol or just, you know, just a myriad of things that they're doing crazy behavior. And so I do pray for them, but I always give the mom uh, the medal yeah. so that she can, you know, give it to them. And it's funny because not all these young men are Catholic or even religious at all. And to the very person, every single one of them, the mothers have said to me, they have it on them at all times. Wow. They keep it with them at all times. They might not do anything else, but that metal is always on them. And they wow. know that it's protection. It's funny that even without me telling the story of it, once they have the metal in their hand, they know that it is protection. Wow. So that's really, um, and exorcisms are, that's, that's a, something you don't want to mess around right, with, right. you know, and to have that protection against evil is really wonderful. So um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about St. Benedict, which is so interesting. <clears throat> so he um, he was around in 480. <clears throat> that is crazy how long ago it was. 
And there were all kinds of, you know, the church was under attack from the very start. <clears throat> and um, unfortunately, because of the world that they lived in, the monks, a lot of the monks were, were a little bit lazy. Um, for whatever reason, they would just, you know, as life got a little easier, not unlike today, we have a lot of things that are, I mean, we can get foods from when I was young, you would never have blueberries other than in the season. Yeah. In yeah. June. And so there's so many things that we have and luxuries that we have yeah. to make our life easier. And that's what was happening to the monks. They got a little, le e you know, it got easier and easier. Um, and his, Pope um, St. Benedict was, um, he was born Umbria, Italy at, in 480, and he became the father of the Western monasticism and founder of the Benedictine order, um, who motto is Ora e Labora, prayer and work. He was sought out by thousands throughout his life for his holiness and his wisdom. He composed the rule, which um, the Benedictine monks follow. His order preserved the civilization known as the Roman Empire, as the Roman Empire crumbled before the barbarian mm -hmm. tribes. This order and work, which uh, seems to be the antithesis of what's going on today, yeah. um, was became such a uh, so valuable and precious that a lot of orders actually adopted it and during his time when he had this order there were monks that didn't like the discipline and mm -hmm. they actually saw it. they were fighting against him because he introduced it and they tried to poison him and um he it's really kind of a neat story because he came in it was and he had some premonition god had given him a prom premonition and he blessed the 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 food the and the drink did. and um the the wine exploded and he had two it was i guess he was noted for these crows um that grabbed the the bread and took it as far as away where no one else could have it wow. and um i don't know maybe they even ate it gave up their lives for it but um anyway that that devotion that he had, that strict devotion, when he people would want to talk to him, and when he had that strict devotion, he he would make them agree to his purity and to his rule. And um, if he's going to help you, he was he was a little bit of a curmudgeon. He stood his ground. He wasn't agreeable to everyone. He didn't. He wasn't relative about anything. He mm. was very strict about it. Mm. And under that order. Um, People's lives changed, and the Benedictines are so uh, gracious, and they love, they're very, very hospitable. You would think that they would be off-putting, that you wouldn't want to be around them, but they are extremely gracious, hmm. and they are, um, they're Benedictine monasteries. If you ever stay at one, you would always, if you couldn't, if you're traveling in Europe, and there's a Benedictine monastery, and you don't have any money, they will take you in. Wow. They will feed you, and they will take you in, and that is their joy and they want mm -hmm. to share with you they have they had lots of um acreage for farming and they worked really really hard and they prayed you know but they would have nice accommodations for you and very very meager for them huh. and that's still the truth yeah. still still today it's the same exact huh. um and this in the united states i've been to a Bonnet benedictine monastery and they sometimes have not right now because of covid they have very very old monks that they're protecting but they will take you in they'd love to take yeah. you in and they're equally as hospitable it's um it's just they found such joy and there's a lot of young men who are wanting to become benedictine monks nice um i know there it's amazing and the dominicans also adopted their role of, of benedict oh. and also have and if you look the benedictine and the and the dominican in this united states have lots of the, the non, there's lots of nuns, there's mm -hmm. lots of um, people that are coming to the order, brand new ones. Young people. Oh, yeah, wow. one of the, one of well, the ones of Nashville are huge, oh, yeah. and they, yeah. their ministry is to teach, and then they have the ones in Michigan who are on Oprah Winfrey, they were on Oprah Winfrey, and they are adorable, and they're exploding, and they have wonderful, mm -hmm. young, beautiful, rich souls and they're all with the order of saint benedict 
Oh, so okay. they're, yeah, they are, huh. and they pray, you know, they're, they've all adopted and they know that um, under that protection, when you are giving glory to the Lord, if you look, Father Bishop Barron just said, um, if you look around, the most, the happiest people are the people that are very devout. They yeah. have the joy. Yeah. It's, the joy is not from the world. You right. can keep pulling it in yeah. and you can keep seeking money and you can keep seeking, you know, especially with social media looking like you're, you know, everything's grand. Yeah. Um, and I pull back the sheets and it's a mess. You know, yeah. those people are just hiding things. And so mm -hmm. the true joy does come from God. But I would highly recommend getting a Benedictine medal. Yeah. And wearing it all the time, which you would think, okay, does she have one on? Oh, yes, she does. Mm -hmm. I always have this. Don't I? No, yeah. I wear it yeah. every time. Anyway, I do have, so this one's a little bit. She passes these out to everybody. I, if I all can't. the kids have them, I'm like, yeah. Good uh, grandma, good grandma. Well, it's protection, and there's yeah. enough in our world, there's enough evil in our own little heads to worry about and yeah. stew about, and, and that we don't, we need protection, and the mm -hmm. fact that we admit it is a humbling, um, gracious gift to God. Yeah. He, he loves that, and and St. Benedict would like nothing more than for everyone to be protected from that evil and yes. not have to. Um, there was other, you can read other um, uh, miracles having to do with him. There was a monk that, um, there was a, a snake bite and he was, and he was dying. He was completely dying and the vision of St. Benedict came to him and he was cured. There's all kinds wow. of miracles involved with this, but I think the the biggest one are the ones you're not going to know about. The miracles right. that when you're wearing it, when you are protected, right. and you don't even know what the evil was. You right, you, right. But you're protected, and, and God's going to take care of that. Um, little Sarah, when she went out, or, um, my youngest, went out to Hollywood. She wanted to be a producer. She was... Um, and I made her have a St. Benedict medal before she left. And she was she was struggling um, in a lot of different ways. And uh, I do believe that it was very short-lived. She was out there for a year and they loved her to pieces and she did very, very well. And she just um, came home because she just felt like she couldn't handle it out there. It was, um, she was, very long 14 hour days those in Hollywood they the people that are working there work very very long hours in cold dark environments for production and it's it's a really uh, not a good environment for a healthy yeah. person and mm -hmm. luckily I believe that that St. Benedict medal brought her home and so protected her anyway yeah. Aww. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you so me much say. for sharing. <laughs> so awesome. So go get a Benedictine medal. They are very, very powerful. Uh, I, I personally have stories too from my family and, and stuff. So I, I can say amen to that. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, I will see you all later. God bless. Bye.